One last question about safety. Oh, yeah. And this was something um, that was found as a, I guess you call it an adverse side effect yeah. in, the, in the clinical trials. Yeah. Um, I believe it was both in the reduce it and strength. Right. Where there was a small, but I think statistically consi significant. Yeah, significant increase in atrial fibrillation. Right. AFib. And AFib. Um, this was in people that already had pre existing heart conditions. Right. Right, and yeah, and then they looked in vital, and there was there was a slight increase, but not statistically significant okay. in AFib, and uh, and that was a lower dose. It was eight hundred milligrams instead of four thousand milligrams. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, this has not been settled. What's mm -hmm. causing this? Um, and I've I haven't got any magic answer either. Talked to cardiologists about it, and they go, I don't know. It hasn't wasn't seen for twenty years. 25 years of randomized trials, nobody saw it. So why in these studies, two of them, four gram doses. So right. that, and that could be, um, it could be that you want to be careful to give omega-3. If you're giving that high a dose to people, you might want to be a little more attentive to AFib. But there's no increased risk for stroke. There's actually decreased risk for stroke, which would be the clinical outcome of, of an AFib right. event. But having AFib itself is not fun. And yeah. having to take warfarin or other blood thinners chronically for your AFib because you've got AFib is not fun. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable thing to worry about to and, and to look into and figure out. We're in our coalition of studies, our 17, 20 cohorts, we're looking at the question of, of incident AFib uh, as a function of baseline omega-3 levels. Did people who had the highest omega-3 been followed out over years are they more likely to develop AFib or not? So we're, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. We're looking at that. And how common is this in, in Japan? Do you know? If I don't. I don't know. I know two, two studies have been published already looking at that question. We're looking at two individual cohorts that followed people out and said higher omega-3 at baseline, lower risk for AFib. Hmm. So, so yeah. it's not four grams a day. So maybe that's it. We'll see. We did one big study where um, uh, we were doing open heart surgery on, on people, try, trying to preload them with omega-3 <clears throat> before open heart surgery. This was a Dr. Mozaferian's study, opera, opera study. And we we're trying to prevent post-op AFib by giving them a big load, load of omega-3 ahead of time. Because that was the theory at that time, that we could prevent atrial fibrillation in people by giving them omega-3 before surgery. And well, it didn't work, didn't make any difference. Um, but we found that even if you give people for like three or four days, 10 grams of omega-3 a day before, or before surgery, they actually, when they checked how much bleeding came on with the surgery, how much post-op bleeding was there, it was actually less post-op bleeding with the people that got the omega-3 than the placebo. Less need for transfusion, which was, Kind of cool. I mean, that that is not that we would advocate it for reducing risk for bleeding, but it's not increasing risk for bleeding.